Right, I'm starting off here with a mix of white, a little touch of yellow ochre, and some ultramarine blue. And I'm using the fan brush, and I'm very quickly stippling on a general pale, pale blue mix. I'm using a slightly crisscross motion, and I'm going to lighten that off as I get down towards the horizon. Now, you can see I'm not trying to blend this too much, and that actually helps to give, because it's not blended, quite a fresh, almost breezy sort of sky. I'm going to put a little bit of darker blue here into this corner of the sky, because I want this darker area here to be balanced by the darker area of this boat down here. Just add a little bit of the, uh, the retarder. You can mix the retarder in with your paints on the palette, or I find it works just as well if you, you almost add it as a, as a glaze. When you wash your brushes out in between colours, you want plenty of paper towel handy to give them a quick clean. And then I'm just using the fan brush now, just not overdoing this, just to give ourselves a little hint of white clouds. Right, I'm just moving on to some cloud shadow now. I've just brought in some of the colour we've used for the sky, add a little bit more white, and brought in a touch of permanent rose and a touch of ultramarine. And there's also a hint of the yellow ochre in from the previous mix. So it gives us a sort of a, a purpley grey colour. Oh, I've also moved on to a large bristle brush as you can see, but it just gives us a hint of some cloud shadows because the sunlight is coming from left to right. And as the clouds get further away, they're subject to perspective like everything else, so they get smaller in the distance. Just added a touch more blue into the mix, just to give an extra, a little bit of variety on the shadows. I don't want the sky too breezy, because although you expect it breezy at the seaside, we've got a fairly calm scene here, so I don't want the two areas competing for attention. So by flattening off some of these clouds, like that sideways, it gives quite a calmer atmosphere. You can see I've put touches of yellow ochre and white into smaller streaks as they go into the distance, like that, and that helps to create the essential perspective. See, I'm just scrubbing on to get a blending effect. As I said, with acrylics, it's not always easy to blend with acrylics, even with the uh, acrylic gel retarder. Right, the next area I'm going to do is to start doing the hillsides and the background trees. And I'm going to use various mixes at this stage of yellow ochre and white. A little touch of ultramarine and we'll see what that goes out like. This just gives us, yeah that's fine. It gives us a bluey green, slightly cool background hill. Now for the trees, I'm going to go over that with a little bit more ultramarine added, keeping it fairly cool. Just changing, I've had a little bit of burnt umber there, here and there, just for a little bit of variety. Now, you can see these trees I've done in the, more, in the farthest distance are slightly paler and greyer, blue-grey, than the nearer trees will be. You see nothing too detailed at all, just a hint of trees on the horizon. Now I hope you can see that just by adding different proportions of blue, white, permanent rose and yellow ochre, we can get a whole variety of colours. I haven't even got onto the burnt umber yet. But what we're going to do now is to put darker colour behind the houses to help them to stand out more. I'm just painting in around the houses so it doesn't look very much like a, a tree shape at the moment, but don't worry about that. Once you start to let the brush dance around, you can see very quickly and very easily, just by using the, <coughs> the rough bristles of the brush, how you can very quickly and easily simulate the, the tops of trees. Now I've done that bigger like that because I ended up with three similar sized tree clusters there by accident and I didn't want that because it looks too regular and contrived. When you see it in this close up, you can see it really is just marks, it's when you stand back from the picture that the eye tells you that it tells itself that it's uh, it's really trees. Right, next thing we're going to paint is just a line to define the promenade and the harbour here. 
and then I'm going to move on to these houses and I'm going to paint them all the white in the photograph I'm going to paint them an off-white almost a purpley grey because they are back in the distance and I don't want them jumping forward if they, as if they were uh, a very bright white again this is no more than a variation on the colours we've been using just different proportions I'm just going to put a little bit of white on that which will blend in with the the other colours it's just a hint of the sunlight just landing here and there on distant features I want the corner of the harbour wall here to stand out against these background trees not too bright and by bringing those brush strokes down like that it gives that impression of the vertical harbour wall I'm just going to tone that down slightly with a bit of brown and yellow ochre and as we come forward we can have that a little bit lighter in colour. Now I'm going to do this distant house in a similar colour to the sky which is a bluey grey, bluey purpley grey. These other houses I'll make slightly lighter but not as I said I don't want them absolutely bright white otherwise they'll jump forward too much into the painting and I don't want that to happen. Just vary the colours slightly just so that they get a bit of definition against each other. Right I've done a darker colour for this side so you've got a clear shadow area but note how that shadow area or low light darker than the front of the house is much lighter than the background trees because we have painted those trees dark to let these houses stand out. Right I'm painting the roofs a dark blue grey slate colour. You notice how little detail there is on this now they've got lost a little bit against the trees so what I'm going to do now is just to having put the dark base colour on is just to give a little hint of highlight like that which still leaves them fairly dark but defines them against the, the trees right we're going to paint the shingle shore and the mud and the sand and the bits and pieces that have been left by the departing tide. Right I've mixed three colours from burnt umber, the yellow ochre and the white, a fairly dark colour dominated by the burnt umber, a medium colour for the middle ground of the uh, seashore and then we've got the yellow ochre with a little hint of white and frankly what's left on the brush. No necessity for detail here because it's not the sort of picture that warrants it. Right now I'm starting to bring some of the pure sand area into play here. I'm going to darken some of this off in a second. Right I'm just going to use some of the sky colour now to give us our base colour for the water. Now as I'm putting the base colour of the water on, I'm just adding a few little streaks of other colours that's in the sky. A little bit of pink here and there, don't want it too dominant. Because water reflects what's in the sky. Now notice how I'm putting the, regardless of the way these contours are falling, I'm trying to put the water, the base colour for the water on, horizontally because there's nothing worse than water looking like it's falling off the page. 